Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can go about working out the equation of a trajectory. And let's suppose we've got a particle being projected with a speed of view at an angle theta to the horizontal. And what I'm going to do is set up some axes across here. Let's say we have this as our x-axis and we'll go upwards as our y-axis. And that means that somewhere along here our particle is going to be. Well, let's just say that after t seconds the particle is over here. And we'll mark it in as p and its coordinates are x and y. So what I'm looking for then in getting this equation of the trajectory is a relationship between y and x. So we need to add on the acceleration due to gravity, so that acts downwards, just mark that in as g. So in order to establish the relationship between x and y, what I'm going to be doing is work out an equation for the horizontal motion and the vertical motion. And then they'll both have the time t in and I'll eliminate t between the two equations and I should be able to get that relationship between x and y. So that's where we're going with this. So first of all then we start by looking at the horizontal motion. So just put an intro up there. Now when we look in the horizontal sense we know that it's going to move at a constant speed. The component of speed will be u cosine of theta. And so after t seconds, it's at this position here, x. It's travelled a horizontal distance x. So therefore, x will be equal to u times the cosine of the angle theta times the time. Okay, remember it's here at t seconds. Let's just put t there, okay? Now I can rearrange this for t, so if we make t the subject, t is going to be x divided by u cosine theta. And I'm going to need to come back to this equation later, so I'll number it 1. Next, we're going to be looking at the vertical motion. And because it's initially projected upwards, I'm going to take upwards as positive. So we'll take upwards as positive and we've now got constant acceleration in the upward sense. So I'm going to need to use my SUVAT equations. So remember the S is displacement. We've got U, the initial speed. We've got V, the final speed and the acceleration and then we've got the time. So S is going to be equal to Y. It's going to have this displacement from the start, whether it goes up and then back down, it's still going to be Y units above the initial starting point. So that's going to be Y. The initial speed in the upward sense is going to be the vertical component of this initial speed here. That's going to be U sine theta. Okay, u sine theta is that initial speed upwards, so we've got u sine theta there. As for v, the final speed in the vertical sense at this point here, I'm not really interested in it. I don't need to know it, so we'll just ignore that one. As for acceleration, that acts downwards in the negative sense here, so it's going to be minus g. And then the time t, well that's going to be what we've got from 1. Okay, so I'll just put 1 there. So when it comes to working out an equation here that doesn't use the v, then we've got to turn to using s equals ut plus a half a t squared. Okay, just change that u to that kind of u. So filling in our values here, for s we've therefore got y equals u sine theta. So we've got u sine theta 
and that's multiplied by the t which we've seen in one is this so we'll just put that in brackets there and it's multiplied then with x divided by u cosine of theta then we've got plus a half times the acceleration which is minus g times t squared again which is this value here if we square that we get x squared then all divided by u squared cosine squared theta so all we need to do now is just clean this equation up what we've got is y equals and for this first term here the u's cancel and we're just left with x times sine theta over cosine theta. Well, sine theta over cosine theta is tan of theta. So what we've got here then is x tan of theta. And then for this last term here, we've got minus gx squared over 2u squared cos squared theta. So minus gx squared all divided by 2u squared cos squared theta. Now this is one version that you could have. It's not a very popular one, but uh, nonetheless it is a Cartesian equation for our trajectory. What we tend to do with this though is take the last term, okay, this one here, and we've got minus gx squared all divided by 2u squared but here we've got 1 over cos squared theta. 1 over cos squared theta is best known as sec squared theta. So this is quite a popular version for the Cartesian equation then of our trajectory. But it's still not the only one because we can adjust this last term. I'll show you. Let's just put y equals x tan theta down again. Okay. And then minus gx squared over 2u squared. Now, you should be familiar with the fact that sec squared theta is the same as 1 plus tan squared theta. So, if you are familiar with that, then in place of sec squared theta, we can write this as 1 plus tan squared theta. This is quite handy because... It gives us an equation in terms of tan theta. So, three versions then for the Cartesian equation of the trajectory. So, I hope that's given you some insight on how to uh, go about proving those formally. Okay?